Hello, welcome to Anson Griffin's occasional series of YouTube tutorials featuring MATLAB. Today we're looking at multinomial logistic regression, just highlighted here, and the command is MNR fit. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at. So let's look at the data that we're going to be using for this example. Uh, one of my students was doing the survey and he asked them to rate on a one to five, you know, the perceived hazard of these guys here okay and then we're looking at question eight down here and we're just looking at minor accidents so whether the students had an accident or didn't have an accident and we were comparing these guys with these six variables here and remember there'd actually be seven because there's a six multinomial plus the constant so what we did was we took question five data and I put that into a spreadsheet and I transposed it here. All right, these are the X's. So I transposed it so that they were in columns. And then I took this column here, sorry, this row here, minor accident one to five. And I put it in here and Again, I transposed it or so that it was a nice vertical there. So this is why these are X's. Zero is no accident and one is an accident. And we're trying to see was there any bearing of these guys here on the uh, accident, no accident. So we have a binary outcome with logistic regression. Okay, so I can get rid of the two spreadsheets. Uh, don't save and I can shut that lad down as well and I won't save that either so here I've read in my X data now I know I've just shut it down so I went to the file and some tree I went to sheet 1 and I went from B9 to G33 uh, and I read in the X data and then there, the Y, it's the same sheet, it's the same file, the same sheet, and it's A9 to A33. So I've read in the X, and then I for MATLAB, you have to make a category, like it's type 0 or type 1. That's okay. And then I call the command here. So it's MNR, multinomial regression uh, fit. The X data, which is the B9 to G33, and the Y is A9 to A33. Okay, and we got um, some values. So I'm going to run this, and then we're going to uh, just comment here. So I'll just run that. And you can see down here we're busy. It takes a little while. Control Shift M will get me back there. And we see some of the answers spat out here. So we have to try and explain with the two screens here side by side. So I got B, I got the deviations and I got the stats from the MNR fit over here. So remember this lad is the constant. This lad is uh, the first x the second x the third x the fourth x the fifth x and the sixth x so these are the log slopes the log coefficients scroll down just a little bit here i then wanted to make what were the non-log like the normal values so what, oh on the right here how did i convert the log values into normal values I just exponential them and there they are there and you can see that the last one is quite a big uh, coefficient so we think that may or may not be uh, a source of influence on whether there is an accident or no accident and then this lad here is the second highest coefficient so whether he has any statistical bearing or not on an accident or no accident is to be determined. I just scroll that a little bit here so we can see what's going on. So there are seven variables. Remember there were six X's plus the intercept. And I'm just going to scroll here a little bit. I might just blow it up here. It's too 
awkward to do this. So, do any of the seven variables have any bearing on accident, no accident? The null hypothesis that they don't have any, and then the alternative hypothesis, at least one of the variables has an influence. And the significance level, you know, that most journals, most papers would use is 5%. So, any variables with a p-value of 5% of less, five percent or less, we say, has a bearing or an influence on the uh, accident, no accident. And if it's uh, more than 5%, uh, they don't have, uh, have any bearing or influence. So let's, what are these p-values? P-values are here. Okay, and the smallest p-value is here. And the second smallest, if I get this right, is here. And the third smallest is here. So remember, the smaller the p-value, the more likely that variable has an influence on whether it being zero or one. Now I don't bother looking at so it's number, so it's those guys. So let's go down a little bit. I have it fully commented here on the right hand side. So the Junctions is a point oh seven oh seven. So remember, we're saying none of them statistically have an outcome, but of the ones that you know, none of them have a bearing or an influence on the outcome of accident or no accident. But the one most likely to have uh, a bearing or an influence is junctions. Uh, the second most is Lewis tracks. That's your man here, and. The next one up is the cars parked in the cycle lane. Now, I didn't bother with the other ones because the p-values are so high. Like, it's they're just saying they really have no influence. So, I just mentioned that. Next thing here. We're going to just blow this up here again. We're on this line here. We're going to get stats.t. Now, there's really no need to do stats.t. Because stats dot p like p for Paris tells us everything, but just it reinforces. So uh, the t is for student t. So and as a ballpark figure, if the t value is greater than plus two or less than minus two, it has a bearing or an influence. And if it's anywhere between minus two and plus two, it doesn't. So when we run it, there's all our t values. Just having trouble finding my mouse. So now I, I just used two as a rough guide. So the that's the one point oh eight oh seven five, which as far as I remember is the junction. Let me just remind myself. Yeah. It's close note but no cigar, and that's giving us the same answer here. Oh seven oh seven is not five percent, it's not point oh five, but it's you know heading in that direction. Just blow that up again here on the right hand side. So just finally, in summary, none of the coefficients, that's none of the six questionnaires and the, the first variable would be the constant. None of them have any bearing or influence on whether there's an accident or not an accident. But we ran the maths and we using stats.t, we can work out the relative influence that those six X's have on the likelihood of an accident or no accident. Hope that helps a little and thanks very much for listening.